We're back on Get Up, and it has been a wild ride for Lamar Jackson, beginning last season when he just dominated the sport. Youngest quarterback to win MVP in league history. Ravens were 14-2. and two. This year, starting slowly, ranking in the middle of the pack in total QBR through the first half of the season, then won his last five starts, and then came the playoffs. Lamar beating the Titans for his first postseason victory, then falling last weekend to the Bills. So that has been the last couple of years. Here is Ravens coach John Harbaugh on the future. Absolutely, we want you know Lamar to uh, to sign a long-term deal and be with us, and that's I'm I'm totally certain that that's going to happen. Because Lamar Jackson's won a lot of football games here, and our offense has won us a lot of football games here, and we're not apologizing that for one second. We are going to improve it, no question about it. We're going to go to work to be more precise, more efficient. But to be clear, he's now through three seasons, which means he is eligible for a contract extension for the first time. And so, Adam Schefter, we come to you. What is the latest on them getting a deal done long term for Lamar in Baltimore? Well, Greeny, this is something the Baltimore Ravens have planned for, prepared for, budgeted for, and they know the direction that they're going to go. You heard John Harbaugh himself say, I am certain that we're going to extend Lamar Jackson. So the only question then is how long is the deal and how much is the money? And the two sides will figure out a way to get that done because they're committed to him and he's committed to them. And it makes sense for both sides to get this deal done. Yes, the Ravens will have to get Lamar Jackson some help and he'll want to get the contract he wants. But again, John Harbaugh's tone was so insistent and so strong that you know it's only a matter of time before they do this deal this offseason. And so you saw Hembo put some of the numbers of the richest quarterback contracts in the sport today on your screen. So Lewis Riddick is one who um, will someday be making these decisions for a living. Let, let's, let's put Patrick Mahomes in his own category. That contract may genuinely be one of one. Is there any reason Lamar Jackson doesn't just slot right in there with Deshaun Watson and, and Russell Wilson, the next highest contracts of any quarterback in the sport? Well, right now, as we sit here, Greeny, you know, there, there would be some reason for pause in terms of putting him that high, like tucking him right in there with those guys. And this isn't because I think you should be not be committed to Lamar, but because, look, there's some risk going forward relative to how they use him in their offense. I mean, look, this is a guy who they put in harm's way a lot because he is a primary ball carrier. So that's number one. When you're talking about doing contracts like this, you're projecting future performance, and future performance is really contingent upon you being available. And, look, Lamar has done a great job of staying healthy thus far in his career. But you know there, that there's that risk factor going forward. That's number one. And number two, look, they just have to make sure that this offense continues to grow and expand around him, and then he grows and expands his game also, meaning this. He has been deadly inside the numbers. You know that they are a tight end-centric attack that likes to throw the football down the middle of the field. But outside the numbers, it continues to be a limiting aspect or limited aspect of their game because they just don't have anybody out there. So are they going to address it in free agency? Are they going to get somebody like Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay? Are they going to get someone like Allen Robinson? Are they going to get some, you know, someone of that nature? You know, Corey Davis from Tennessee. Are they going to get somebody like that? Or are they going to address it in the draft? Because if they don't, no matter how exciting Lamar is, and no matter how much of a unique talent he is, his game is going to be limited, and he's going to consistently, I believe, in the offseason, be talking about disappointment relative to the rest of the teams in the AFC because they just don't have the firepower to get over the top. I think as long as they take care of those things, look, they're going to be right there. They're going to always be contending for the AFC conference title. What do you think, Dominique? I know you're very high in them going out and getting him the help he needs. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think it's just that receiver. It's not as much fun to talk about. But after losing Marshall Yonda, their probably Hall of Fame guard, they haven't really replaced that type of production. And you're not going to find someone that good. But I think they need to address the interior of that offensive line because all the pulling and stuff they do with that um, running game is important. And they weren't able to do that as effectively as they have in the past. So the outside receivers are important because Lamar needs that to help his game develop. But they need that running game to return if they can get that running game to return to the level where he was MVP it's going to require some upgrades to the interior of that offensive line also and hoping that the rest of that team stays healthy but I don't well, think look, that as as Harbaugh said I don't think there's any question that they're going to um, extend Lamar Jackson and continue to build around him going forward 
Agreed. And excuse me. And, and, and look, the NFL, like all businesses, is a copycat business, right? So you see what DeAndre Hopkins did for Kyler Murray, and you see what Stephon Diggs did for Josh Allen. Every team with a really good young quarterback is going to be out there looking for their Stephon Diggs, who can turn their quarterback into that level of superstar. So we'll see. Shefty will be busy reporting all those signings when they begin. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's get to the big story off the field, and that continues to be Deshaun Watson in Houston where many people, multiple people in and around the Texans organization believe that Watson has taken his last snap with the team. By now, we've been through this over and over again. You're aware of how he's upset with the franchise for any number of different reasons. Well, I want you to hear, or at least I will read you, what Richard Sherman said on the Chris Collinsworth podcast. He said, if I was Deshaun, I would get out of there as quickly as possible. I'd head to New York. He's talking about the Jets because Richard Sherman played for Robert Sala on the defense in San Francisco and loves him, and that's why he's suggesting that. Now, I don't want anyone to say a word for a moment. Let's just live in that for a second, because that, <laughs> Richard Sherman just saying that, is the closest the Jets have come to winning the Super Bowl in 50 years. Just those words are the closest they could possibly come. And so, Shefty, again, don't toy with my emotions. Tell me the latest on Deshaun Watson and the possibilities here. Well, it's going to continue to be the same. I think the Houston Texans think and are hopeful that they can convince Deshaun Watson that he should come back to Houston. And when you talk to people around the league, Deshaun Watson wants out and is going to try to move on. And I think in this particular case, if Deshaun Watson is willing to dig in, he's going to get what he wants. Because if he doesn't show up there and he makes his feeling known and he demands a trade or he with withholds his services or does any one of a number of things for the Houston Texans, he will let it be known that he intends to move on. And that's going to be a difficult situation. And you could almost see this happening where Houston doesn't want to move on from a transcendent talent like Deshaun Watson. But as we get closer and closer to the draft, can the Texans risk moving past a draft in which they can get the second pick, the third pick, the fourth pick, whatever it may be, to land their quarterback of the future to replace Deshaun Watson if that's the direction they decide to go, or do they let it go past there, move on, and call Deshaun Watson's bluff, which I don't think he's bluffing. So it becomes a tricky situation. And let's also keep in mind that the Texans just hired a new general manager, Nick Casario, who didn't know that this situation was going to be unfolding with Deshaun Watson. They don't even have a head coach yet. So they're going to be hiring a head coach who has to step in and try to help resolve this. There's a lot of unfinished business here, but make no mistake about it, Deshaun Watson wants out. Louis Riddick, what do you think? Look, Grady, this is what happens when you get sloppy and careless regarding relationships and trust in any level of business, whether it be in the NFL or anything. When you tell somebody something, in this case, a franchise caliber player, something, you, ha you know that he is someone who you know a lot of your success rides on. And you have open communication with him, which you're assuming that they had open communication with him on. And then you just totally ignore it. And so the young man is sitting there going, wait a minute. I'm the, fr I'm the face of the franchise here. I'm someone who you obviously have invested in, and I have given you everything as far as that return on investment I can possibly give you. And then you just basically ignore me when you know that the relationship that you have with me, the relationship I have with the head coach, the relationship I have with the weapons that are really what are going to drive the bus down here. And you just break that relationship. You just sever that relationship, whether it was whether it was intentionally or not intentionally. This is what you this is what you inherit. You inherit a young player in his prime now who has it in his contract that he's going to go where he wants to go, or rather, you're not going to send him where you want to send him. He's going to have the right to say, "Hey, look, this is where I want to go." And now you're in, and then you don't have a head coach. You have a new general manager. You have one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player in franchise history, in JJ Watt, whose situation is also looming. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And you know what? You have no one to blame but yourself as far as the people who are the chief decision makers down there. You have no one to blame but yourself. That's just mind boggling because this is really just about relationship management. That's all it is. And it's about communication. That's all it is. And you blew it. And now you've ticked them off. And now you're going to have to pay the price more than likely. And as Shefty said, I think the general consensus around the league is that he is not bluffing. Meanwhile, uh, D. Wood, if I could just come back briefly uh, to the Richard Sherman quote, uh, because you still bleed a little bit of that green with the Jets. I mean, that's, that's, it's a fascinating one, and it's obviously one, if you know any Jet fans, they're losing their minds over this possibility. What is your perspective on this, D. Wood? 
Well, it just shows you how high, you know, how highly Richard Sherman thinks of uh, Rob Asala. I mean, the, for, for him to say, Deshaun Watson, go to a franchise in the New York Jets that haven't been to the playoffs in a decade, who's basically been almost a, la a laughing stop around the National Football League. That just shows you what type of coach that the New York Jets are getting in Rob Asala. So, if, you know, if I'm a Jets fan, I'm thrilled. And we know that the Jets, they have more than enough assets to make this happen. If it's, will it happen? We don't know. We have to see how it plays out. But the Jets are set up pretty doggone well if they want to pounce on this situation. Obviously, Deshaun has to want it, and the Texans have to be good with it. But, Shefty, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's too late for me not to get my hopes up. People say, don't get your hopes It's too late. Shefty, I I, I'm past that I point. Greeny, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get my hopes up. I wouldn't get my hopes up. See, I always <laughs> try and interpret the tea leaves of what it is you're saying. You're telling me not to get my hopes up. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I wouldn't get your hopes up. Listen, <laughs> there'll be a lot of teams interested. Isn't that, isn't that Greeny, awesome? Greeny, do you see, do you, <laughs> I would not get my hopes up. Do you, see, do, you, do you see why the NFL is king? Do you see why the NFL is king? Because Greeny wants hope so bad. He wants oh. it so bad. He's, he's begging for it right it now. Check, and Adam, you just I'm, won't give it to him. I'm trying to keep it in check. I'm trying hey. not to let him get disappointed, okay? Look, there's a lot of Shefty, possibilities, have... a lot of ways he could go. But Greeny, I couldn't say this any more clear. I wouldn't get my hopes up. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Shefty, you didn't have Look to do him like that. <laughs> Someone else is going to have to host the rest of the show. I mean, there's just there's, someone else is going to. Yes, cool.